Wowzer. What's up, everybody? Hey, it's me, DJ Tony. How you doing? No, a, well, DJ Anthony. I sometimes say DJ Tony, but it's DJ Anthony. How's it going, everybody? Well, this week live. Today's topic, the Catholic guilt trip. That's right. Hey, by the way, I'm not a trained professional. I'm not a medical professional. Always check with your healthcare professional. I don't know shit. I'm just a DJ from New Jersey. How you doing? But I'm a human being. I want to talk to you about Catholic guilt trip and how it affects mental health. That's why it has to do with wellness week. Excuse my thing. What does the Catholic guilt trip have to do with mental health? And so if you were born and raised Catholic or really Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or anything, you the Catholic guilt trip is just synonymous with, you know, our parents giving us the guilt trip. You know, you better finish your food or else, you know, God won't be happy or, you know, uh, you, you know, you better say you're sorry or say your prayers, your things like that. So, but growing up a very strict Catholic, I was, uh, the Catholic guilt trip was real, man. And it affected my mental health really for decades later. And, you know, my parents are good parents. They mean well, no one's perfect though. And let me just say this, growing up Catholic was in so many ways a blessing for me. And I really cherish my Catholic upbringing. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. It, you know, made me who I am today. And for the most part, it was good. And this is not a critique of the Catholic Church or the Catholic faith. We can just know a story, no show. It's not to, yeah, it's not that. It, it's my journey. And but um, there were some things that I, I guess you know my parents, my mother. Again, they meant well, but we all joke about oh, the Catholic guilt trip. But it's a real thing, and it can cause problems. And I'm sure it's caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. And if it and if it's extrapolated on and taken way too far it can destroy people, you know, and it's essentially like not meant to hurt our children or me when I was a child, but our parents or maybe even religious leaders, they weaponize, you know, Jesus, they weaponize, you know, the Jewish God, they weaponize uh, the, the Muslim God, they weaponize, you know, the Hindu God or gods. And so, I don't think people mean to do that, but when you're telling a kid like, you know, oh, you, you don't do that. That's a sin. You know, you're going to go to hell. Like, whoa, like I'm not robbing a bank. I, you know, like the guilt trip, you know, like uh, don't, don't have, you know, romance before marriage. You know, God will, you know, you're going to, you'll go to hell or you, you're going to be punished or don't throw out that food. You know, there, there are kids dying in that other country there and God wouldn't like that. And like, you're implying what? Like, what's going to happen to me if I throw out this food? What's going to happen? Well, you know, God might not like that. Like, that's the Catholic guilt trip, you know? And and that's not official doctrine or anything like that. But I think it's sometimes, and, and if you're a Catholic listening to this, you, you know. And if you were born and raised a strict Catholic as I was, I mean, I was, I, let me tell you, I mean, I was, I, I was in it, you know? I was in it, uh, eyeballs deep. So, um, and like I said, most of my Catholic upbringing really kept me out of trouble, did a lot of good for me. So again, it's not a critique and not to bash the Catholic faith. Again, I think it's just how parents particularly or religious leaders or families, you know, misconstrue things, misread things, uh, you know, misunderstand things, weaponize or, or, or use it to um, cajole or um, use it to, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, make their kids or our kids do things, you know, that we maybe don't have, we're, we're losing control. So we throw in the God card, you know, well, God wouldn't like this. And so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We use it to, um, uh, I, I guess manipulate, uh, manipulate has a, a nefarious connotation, but you know, we use it to, yeah, to strong arm or to, uh, you know, make people do things. And that's not right. And again, I'm not talking about like, hey, you shouldn't rob that bank. Of course you shouldn't rob that bank. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like really stuff like that's just, come on, like you're throwing out food. Like you're going to make me think I'm going to hell or God's going to not be happy. Or, you know, someone had pre-romance before marriage. Okay. You know, not the best thing maybe, but really going to hell? You know what I mean? Like things like that, you know, you miss Sunday church. Like, you know, God's not going to be happy about that. What? Like, you know, or you ate meat on Good Friday. Okay. You know, it is a Catholic 
canon law, Catholic law, not to do that. But if you're going to make people think they're going to hell for that, come on. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? This is the Catholic guilt trip. You know what I mean? So, and again, you can cut and paste this into anything, right? Jewish guilt trip, Muslim guilt trip, Hindu. I'm sure all the religions have this <laughs> variation of the, the Catholic guilt trip, just, you know, cut and paste and, you know, put it in your religion. But it's just not right. It's not good. It causes a lot of problems. Uh, you know, again, it's a, almost like a weaponization of one's faith. That's not cool. That's not good. And so my family, my mother tended to do that. I, I think she meant well. You know, I, I, I know my mother loves me. She's a great woman. But, you know, when you are raised in such a way, it's hard to see out of that. And you do that to your kids and your kids do it to your kids and the kids do it to their kids. You know, you, it's almost generational. So, yeah, it made me think. Like, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. Like, I really, like, straight up, no shit. Like, I, I was on eggshells for almost 30 years. You know, well, not in my, when I got to my teenage years. So I was on eggshells for, what, maybe 20 years. Because then eventually I, I stopped thinking, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. For, like, you know, I threw out food, I'm going to hell. Like, I, you know, I, uh, you know, I don't know, I... I you know, went to a nightclub and I, and, you know, ooh, you know, some people in my family would frown upon that. God doesn't want you to do that. Like, what? Like, you know, stuff that's very benign and n normal and what people do. Like, it's just, you know, so the Catholic guilt trip, you know, hey, you didn't go to confession? You didn't go to confession? Oh, my God. How's, how long has it been? Oh, my God. You haven't gone in a month? You haven't gone in a year? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Like, oh, boy, what? You know, so this these things and if you born and if you were born and raised really religious uh, or or you know strict religion in any any faith you know what i'm saying you know what i mean it it f's with your mind and and i don't think that's good i think as parents you know we want to um, show our kids and our family you know that your particular god whoever you subscribe to you know loves you and and we want to do the right thing but you don't want to be walking on eggshells like every like that's that's insanity. Like, you know, that, that's not cool, you know, and, and some of the laws and religions definitely lend way to, you know, making people stress the hell out and anxiety and, and, and freaking out for really no reason. I mean, like, I know that there's a, a law and I'm pretty sure it's still there. And again, not a critique on the Catholic church, but it is what it is. And again, every faith has stuff like this. that's like, you know, unreasonable. And that is if you miss Sunday mass, if you miss Sunday church, that is equivalent to a mortal sin and mortal sin is things like murder. So you're telling me if I miss church on Sunday, I've committed a murder in God's eyes, in God's eyes. You know, it's like, what? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, viewers, if, if that's not canon law or the Catholic law anymore, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, again, you miss Sunday church. That's equivalent to murder, period. Now, I didn't make that up. Can you imagine like you're 12, 13, and you and you miss Sunday church or, or someone in your family does or a friend, does, and you're like, oh, my God, they're they're evil. They're bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is, that's a slippery slope. That That's not cool. And uh, anyways, uh, I don't believe that anymore. You know, you can miss church. That's fine. Uh, you know, you, you go to church. Church is good. I go to church, you know, but to, to, to put it on that, like, and when you're a young person and you hear that, like when I heard that, I was like, whoa. So I thought like friends of mine who miss church or friends of mine, yeah, who miss church or family members of mine who miss church. I, I thought they were bad. They were evil, like well, murderers. I mean, it's a mortal, a mortal sin. A mortal sin is murder. And then you got people that, you know, in my family, they would say, well, you know, you break one sin, you break them all. Really? So you break one sin, you break them all. So if someone, uh, I don't know, someone, uh, uh, again, uh, <laughs> does a white lie and says, oh, you look, you don't look fat in that dress. You look great. Meanwhile, in their head, they're thinking the person looks fat. That's a lie. If you break that, it's a lie. It's a lie. That means you break, you, you break one sin, you break them all. So you did everything in murder now, like, because you, you, you told a, a, a white lie like that, ah, you know, that's not even a, that's not even biblical, I don't think. But anyways, but I had people in my family used to say that, you know, you break one sin, you break them all. Really? You know, 
just because someone drinks beer doesn't mean they're going to smoke pot, do coke, and then methamphetamine and 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 heroin. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's just insanity. You know, because I went 66 in a 65, now all of a sudden I'm a mass murderer too. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's come on. Like I don't know. I don't know about that. But you know, so you got to really be I don't know. I think parents need to have talks with their kids and because you're going to develop a, a big complex in your mind. It's not going to be good. And that's what happened to me. Like I was like, oh, you know, and nobody checked that. Nobody pulled me aside and said, Anthony, you know, you missed Sunday church. It's okay. You're not a mass murderer. You know, it's just, you know, you, yeah, you need parents or religious leaders to to explain that, to keep that in check, because that will make you really unstable mentally. You'll think that, and you'll think other people are bad. And, 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 you know, so, so the Catholic guilt trip is real and it's not right. Um, I think, uh, you know, we can have a faith that's rich and loving and caring, but you don't have to be like, Oh, you know, you know, like, come on. Like, it, you know, mm, yeah. So anyways, but uh, again, my Catholic faith overall was a good experience growing up and all that stuff. And I wish that I had some people that could have modulated some of the stuff. But, you know, again, my mother and, and it was brought up in a way, you know, immigrant and never had anybody challenge, you know, their beliefs or, or you know, they weren't well read or well educated. Again, no judgment, but. Now, as I'm older, I see like, okay, you know, and even if you're well read and, and, and everything, I mean, there's people who think, you know, a lot of things that in all different religions that, that have some rules and regulations that are just like, you know, you're going to get people a complex, you know, the, again, the Catholic guilt trip. And I think the big thing though, is when it's used to manipulate or weaponize or, you know, make people do things. Like again, it could be something simple. Like I said, like, well, finish your food because if you don't, you know, God will be very angry, or you know, kids are dying in that other country, and you know, God will cry. Like, very manipulative. You know, it's like eh, that's that's not good. You know, put to throw all the food out, or give it to the dog, or save it for tomorrow, or but you, I don't know that you gotta, damn, you know, weaponize the religion like that. You know, so you you, yeah, I mean, and everyone has to raise their kids the way they see fit, but. Uh, for me, that was the downside. That was the dark side of, of my, uh, religious upbringing was, you know, that, uh, you know, oh yeah, God is love, but you better do this or else. It's like, what? You, you, you know? So I think, um, yeah, you gotta have talks with your kids and, uh, that's between you and your family. And I think if you have a religious leader, that's giving you the Catholic guilt trip, that's not cool. You know, uh, yeah, you got to kind of balance here, folks, you know, and, uh, yeah, it's not, you break once and you break them all. That's, that's stupid. <clears throat> you jaywalked and now all of a sudden you're a mass murderer. You know what I mean? That's the, you know, you, you ate meat on good Friday and now all of a sudden, what? You're going to be this massive worldwide criminal. Come on. You know, maybe God uh, or the rules, you know, hey, you shouldn't eat meat. It's okay. God loves you. Just trying to do it again. You know, like, that's it. It's not, you know, whoa, you better hit the confetti. Oh, my God. I can't believe we did that. Oh, such a sin. You know, it's like, what? You know, I had a I had a couple of people I know used to be Catholic priests, and then they left the priesthood, and they, and they left the priesthood, you know, and they got married. Or, <laughs> in my family. Oh, that piece of crap. That that priest is going to hell, just right to hell. And I thought that too. I was like, yeah, they're evil. They're going to hell. They left the priest. Like, come on. You know, that's not cool. That's They broke their vow to God and now death, destruction. Like, really, dude? Like, God's got a lot of problems that he's got to deal with. You think, I mean, really, like, this is the problem that he's going to like, yeah, you know, the, the, the ex-priest now that he's in hell. Hey, what are you in here for? Yeah, I killed 50 million people. What about you? I left the priesthood. That's it. Uh, yeah. You know, common sense. Look, please, you know, I, I, I just, 
Yeah. So again, the Catholic guilt trip, you know, it's, uh, we laugh about it, but yeah, it definitely caused a lot of mental angst and anxiety in my life for decades. And, uh, and even now, sometimes I still have remnants of struggling with it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, no, the Catholic faith is a beautiful faith and, uh, I'm glad I was raised in, in the Catholic faith, but again, sometimes it got carried away <laughs> in my family. It was just like, Whoa, uh, I laugh about it now. It wasn't funny for a number of years, you know, as I was struggling. So, and I couldn't talk to my parents or family about that because they all believed, you know, you were going to hell, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you didn't go to church every Sunday, you know, stuff like that, you know? So, uh, that's, that's, that's a, that's a little bit much, but anyways, so, uh, hope that helped. Um, I think with the internet and social media, there's a lot of places that if you are struggling with religiosity or, you know, guilt for things that are, you know, you're not committing crimes, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's places out there that you can talk to people, um, and you can seek help, you know, go to therapy. I always highly recommend that. Uh, I go to better help for my stress and anxiety and it's, uh, they should be paying me. They're not, but anyways, I think, um, yeah, th there's so many tools out there to help you through your religious experiences and no matter what religion you are, um, if you're having stress and anxiety and it's ruining your life and it's not adding quality happiness to your life, um, maybe it's not the religion, maybe it's you, uh, or maybe it is the religion, part of the religion, and, and, and maybe it's not you. But either way, like, I think sometimes it's nice to have a clear head that has no vested interest. And I don't know that you should necessarily talk to somebody in your religion. So, like, you know, when I was struggling with this, you know, the Catholic guilt trip, it wasn't really good for me to talk to a Catholic priest. I really would need to talk to somebody who's neutral, you know, someone who is a therapist not at my church, the minimum, uh, and maybe uh, someone who is uh, pragmatic, you know, uh, doesn't have a religious leaning. That would be someone that could really kind of shed light and look at the whole picture from, you know, a thousand miles up, you know, versus like when someone's in it with you, the, of course, what are they going to tell you? You know, well, yeah, our God thinks this and that you know, sometimes you need that neutral ear uh, to just hear you out and, and yeah, just hear you out really. And not to tell you, you know, oh, leave your religion. No one's saying leave your religion, but, but yeah, or maybe talk to somebody who is in your faith that might be a little bit more laid back, you know, uh, and say, well, what, what do you think, you know, or, or find a priest that might be, or, or a rabbi or an imam who's maybe a little bit more laid back, you know, or maybe you need to find someone more conservative, but, you know, the opposite of what, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, in this case, I was already fire and brimstone. So I didn't need more drill sergeant. I needed more like someone who's a little more lax, a little more calm and cool. And, and, and that's what I needed, you know, but being raised in my house, it was fire and brimstone. So, and I, and you, you can't oftentimes talk to your family about it. You know, you need to talk to, again, a neutral ear, maybe not even a priest or a rabbi or an imam, but again, a therapist, you know, and you can go to betterhelp.com, the app. It's great. It's phone therapy or FaceTime therapy. And you can actually pick a Christian therapist or Muslim therapist or atheist therapist or neutral therapist or LGBTQI therapist, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, and that's another one, you know, like when I was growing up, it was like, oh, if somebody was gay, like the worst fucking sin of the sins, you know. And I was brought up like that, like probably a lot of people, right? And it's like, no, and then, like, straight to hell, like straight up to hell. And that, Give me a complex because I'm thinking like gay people are evil, which is not true. But, you know, it was only through my own living life, getting to make friends with gay people and getting to know people who are trans and getting to know people who are bisexual and, and knowing and, and when you know them and you see them and or maybe you have finding out I have I've had and I have family that are gay and you live a little bit, you know, and it, it challenges you. It's like, oh, you know, they're not bad they're not evil they're not going to hell you know and but when you don't know anybody and you don't have exposure to different people different mindsets different whatever it may be right do you know people who are poor do you know people who are billionaires do you know people who whatever black why you know it, it, 
when all you do is hang around your own kind, mentally, physically, spiritually, that's not good. It's an echo chamber. So, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't, when I was very young, I didn't know anybody, you know, who was gay. And I'm not trying to make it about the gay show. My point is about, you know, Catholic guilt trip. Oh, you're gay. Oh, that person's going to hell. You know, you know, you didn't finish your food, you're going to hell, or you, you know, made out with a girl. You shouldn't have done that. You know, like, you know, you're going to hell, like it's, or, or not hell, but your God's not going to be happy or God's crying. And it's like, what? So my point is until you've walked in someone's shoes or, you know, someone dear to you, you know, it's, you find out, wait, what? These, you know, they're not going to, these people aren't going to hell. They're good people. Like, what, what are you, what are you talking about? You know? And, and if you want to play that game, like, well, they're sinning. Well, we're all sinners. And, and your point, <laughs> it's like, you know, so anyways, yeah. If you're struggling, uh, you know, with the cat, or you might be someone who is gay or, or trans or whatever, and, and you're religious and no one knows yet. You haven't come out, and that you, you know, that's serious, right? You, you know, it's it can be um, very, very seriously hurting your health, physically, mentally, spiritually. You know, you need to talk to somebody again, a neutral ear outside of your church or mosque or synagogue. And, and again, I highly recommend better help. You have nine eight eight dial nine eight eight for free help, um, but you're you're not you're not evil. You're not bad. You're good. You're loved, you know? And, uh, and I, and I get it, you know, our families mean well, but, um, you know, when you're raised a certain way, it's hard for people to break away from that and to be open-minded. And, uh, again, you're not breaking any laws or anything. It's your religion, but religion, you know, and especially in America, separation of church and state, your religion, you can believe whatever you want, but that's not the law of the land. That's your faith but that's not the law of the land and certain things, yes, coincide and certain things parallel, but there's a separate separation of church and state. So, you know, like you're not breaking any laws and, and also even from religion to religion, certain things in certain religions are not sins and certain things in relig other religions are sins. So all I'm saying is like, if your Catholic guilt trip is wearing on you, no matter what the issue is, you know, whatever, it could, could be anything, you know, <laughs> but talk to somebody. You know, because uh, I know how it is. Like growing up Catholic was for me overall good experience, but there were moments, man, it was really played a war heavy on my mind and body and spirit. You know, and I really had no one to talk to uh, because there was no internet back then. I'm an, I'm an old bastard, you know, uh, or I, I couldn't yet. Yeah, where, where do I go? You know, so you can utilize the power of the internet, the power of social media, the power of apps to really help you out. You know, so you don't suffer alone. Uh, I know what you're going through because I went through it as a young person and, and being a very devout Catholic. And, and like I said, I still go to church today and stuff like that. And, uh, but yeah, like, I'm not like, oh, I, you know, somebody ate meat on Friday. Oh my God, you're going to hell. Ah. Like, come on people. So anyways, I hope that helps and thank you for listening. And, uh, you can type in below whatever. And, uh, so, but you are, uh, Appreciate it here. Thank you for watching Wellness Week. And uh, to Megan, a lot more great content coming up. And that is it, everybody. I am signing out. Five, four, three, two, one. Bye. Ciao.